Hello, let's talk about Skyline, a modern dashboard for OpenStack. The authors of Skyline is Wen Sheng and Wu Zhouwen. Wen Sheng is Nine Nine Cloud R&D Director, while Wu Zhouwen is Nine Nine Cloud Product Manager. This is me, Wen Sheng. Wu Zhouwen is his pretty girl. What is Skyline? Skyline is a modern OpenStack dashboard. It's donated by Nine Nine Cloud, who focus on OpenStack nine years. Skyline is composed by Python Fast API framework and JavaScript React framework. Skyline's mascot is Nine Color Deer. The Nine Color Deer comes from Dunhuang Mural, the Nine Color King Deer, whose moral is Buddhist cause effect and gratefulness which is consistent with Nine Nine Cloud's philosophy of embracing and feedback community since its inception. We also hope Skyline can keep light, elegant, and powerful as the Nine Color Deer to provide a better dashboard for the OpenStack community and users. Skyline has two components, API Server and Web Console. API Server is like Horizon API, however, much more simple. We pass through the mostly APIs to OpenStack endpoint directly, rather than adding an adaption layer, so that you can troubleshooting with your browser's developed tools, which makes debugging much more easier. And Skyline Web Console is a pure front-end framework without Node.js. We keep Skyline simple and stupid. Less is more. Skyline also supports extensions for other services. For example, billing, metrics, crown job, and so on. You can quick start Skyline with a simple doc image, which includes both Skyline API server and console. Please find them in opendev.org Skyline. Then, Wu Wen will show you the Skyline design details, and a 5-minute demo. Thanks. Hope you enjoy it. This is an introduction to Skyline, the new OpenStack dashboard. Now, let's have the technical overview. Firstly, why is Skyline? Talk to Horizon. We think it is useful, but not amazing. Horizon is widely used, but it has certain pay points. The first point is the heavy and old technical debt. To be specific, the support for AngularJS was terminated, which means the end of life for that. Also, JavaScript libraries are hard to upgrade. The second point is that it renders components depending on the backend template. So, it has complex browser routing management. Finally, it has a complex technology stack and engineering structure in detail. Horizon developers need to master both Python and JavaScript skills. And some processes seems complicated, including collecting static files, testing, and deploying. On the above reasons, the Skyline is born and it is launched as a modern management dashboard. Skyline contains two parts. The first part is Skyline UI. It is a management dashboard built with React.js as a core, and it runs on the browser. Skyline API is HTTP service that provides necessary APIs for Skyline UI. Then. Let's talk about Skyline's core features. Firstly, the front end and the back end have their own responsibilities. The front end focuses on functional design and user experience, and the back end focuses on data logic. Secondly, it is simple and reliable. With the simple architecture, and stable operation, it doesn't encapsulate unnecessary logic, and it follows the API or OpenStack service. Thirdly, it provides better performance. It uses coroutines to improve concurrency, 
and it reduces quarrelings to improve performance. Lastly, it is cool to use and develop. It provides excellent user experience design and software architecture. Next, I will share more about Skyline UI. As the picture shows, the RESTful API works as a persistence layer. The MobX store is used to save data and handle changes. As we say, the root store, instance store, volume store, and so on. When data in store changes, the rendering will be triggered on the corresponding component. Here we go the skyline details. Whether the menu is configured depends on the Skyline Settings API and it realizes the page access control. It has three core components, list, detail, and action. The resource operation page is divided by authority. The project admin and the system admin have different operation panels. Whether these pages are accessed or operations are allowed depends on the endpoint policy rule and the permissions. Each list page has the store, such as instance store, volume store. The root store manages global states, such as authentication information. Each page is based on its corresponding base class. With the base class, only small code needs to be rewritten and it greatly reduces the code duplication. Then, I will talk that from the base list, base detail, and the base action component. The base list component is first. Let's look at a page built with that component. Whether this page is accessible depends on the endpoint policy rule and the permissions. The displayed data is fetched by crawling methods in store, and the data is presented in the form of columns. Actions are managed by action configs. For example, independent operations are managed by primary action, such as create instance action above the table. Bench operations are managed by bench action such as bench start, bench stop, bench reboot, and so on. And the operations on the action column for each item is managed by item action. This page will refresh regularly to get the latest updates. And you can also click this button to stop the automatic refresh. The data can be researched based on filter items. In this page, backend pagination is supported and it is achieved by limit, marker, and total count API. When users interact with this page, the page will automatically refresh. Next is the base detail component. Similarly, I will use the page to explain that. This is a resource detail page. It will request information based on route. The page displays details based on customer header. And more information is classified by the tab. And they are displayed in the form of card or list. Also, the details page share the same action configs with list page. Finally, is the base action component. It has four base classes, form action, step action, model action, confirm action. Whether actions are allowed depends on policy rules and permissions. When the status changes or there are some certain limitations, whether you can take action depends on allowed. Then let's look at the create volume page as an example. In this page, you can click Confirm and it will request the corresponding action of the store, where operation feedback will be returned in the notification box. 
After talking about Skyline UI, let's take a look at Skyline API. It has three core features. The user session part contains login API, lookout API, and profile API. System configuration contains settings API. And the access permission contains policies API and permissions API. Then we will talk about involving technologies. For the Async I.O. and Uv Loop, they are the foundation of high performance core team applications. The GUNI core and the UV core are multi process ASGI servers. The FAST API is used to build easy to use for featured API framework. Next, I will explain how Skyline interacts with OpenStack. When the browser is accessed, the cloud service is accessed through this VIP. The request will firstly enter the HA proxy cluster. And one of these workers will perform load balancing and send the HTTP request to a controller node to access the Skyline UI. If the accessed content is a static file, the Skyline UI will directly return the static file to the browser. But if an API service is accessed, it is forwarded to a Skyline API or OpenStack API through the NGX proxy, and the corresponding data is returned. It sounds a bit abstract, and I will use some examples to illustrate. Let's look at a static example. When user access the home page, the request is sent to get the index.html file by the Nginx, and the Nginx will directly return the index.html and other static files. Next, I will talk about the login process. During the login process, the request containing the username and the password will be received by the Skyline and forwarded to OpenStack Keystone for authentication. If the authentication fails, an error will be returned and the browser will display an error message. But if the authentication is successful, the Skyline will use the Kingston token to generate user session JWT token. Besides, it will set the session ID to cookie and return it to the browser. Next is an example of calling a sample API. When creating a server, the request is directly forwarded to OpenStack Nova service through the NGX and the success or failure response will be returned. Finally, I will show the process of calling a complex API. When accessing the server or related resources, a request will be sent to the Skyline. The Skyline will call OpenStack APIs such as Nova, Cinder, Glance. As a result, all responses and the resources involved will be returned together. That's all. Thank you. Hi, welcome to my video. I will show you demonstration of the Skyline dashboard. Firstly, to log in the Skyline dashboard, you need the login credentials. The username and the password should be provided by the system admin. And please contact the 99 Cloud Technology Supporting Center if you don't have an account. Now I will demonstrate with the administrator role. After you log in, you will find an overview page which takes a nice summary of the current project, including the user profile, alert events, and resources usage according to the quarter on preview settings. And you can increase that by arising a support ticket and click the button here. And follow the instructions to create a ticket and describe your requirements. If you have multiple projects, you can quickly switch between them by choosing this button. Next is about the message center. It provides convenience for you to receive any notifications about the resources. Okay, let's move to basic modules. 
Firstly, I will share with you how to manage networks. Click the network menu to get the drop down sub menus. The pathology provides an overview of the network environment. Everything can be seen here, and the links among them are shared. Let's move to the instance part. And I will show you the process of how to launch an instance here. You could launch instance from image. You have the ability to manage volumes and configure the type, choose the size. Click next to show the config network settings. Choose the number of instances you want to launch. It helps you to launch multiple instances with the same setup at the same time. After creating the instance, you can see many features on the action column. For more details about this instance, you should click the ID. On the detail page, you can find more information about the instance. And you can find the monitoring graph here. Then I will show some advanced modules. The Chrome tab allows to automatically perform tasks. You can customize the settings. Recycle bin. It is used to manage instance being soft deleted. Finally, it's about alert center. You can create an alert row for instance metrics. And all events will be displayed here for inspecting. Next part is about the management platform. Click this administrator button on the top navigation bar. I will quickly show you this part. This part is used for administrators to manage the whole platform, including all projects, users, and resources out of the project scope. On this homepage, you can easily get an overview of this platform. By the account management menu, you can access projects, users, and user groups and take some management on them. In the monitor center, by choosing the monitor overview page, you can get an overview such as alert event, physical node usage, host top 5, instance top 5, and so on. You can get more monitoring details by choosing the submenus such as physical node, storage cluster, OpenStack service, and other services. Lastly, management provides entries for system administrator to take the system configurations. That's all, thank you.